Mama, good to see you. Gosh, it's been a while. You look so old. Oh, um, hi, Sharon. I mean, older, not old, old, though. I think I was your age when I started on Botox. Are you home for a visit? Or are you doing that remote learning thing? I'm home for remote learning. Getting to spend quality time living with my parents as an adult. That's why I'm actually hiding out here. How's college going? What are you majoring in again? Was it uh, social media or gender studies? I actually graduated. I'm getting my master's degrees in evolutionary anthropology and cognitive neurosciences. Oh, look at you, all smart and hardworking. STEM is all the rage these days, so I'm sure you'll be the one needing the prenup. <laughs> Cole insisted on it back in the day, but I managed to talk him out of it. Oh, how is Cole, by the way? And the kids? Oh, I guess your parents didn't tell you. Cole and I are divorced now. He has the kids. But I've got my new daughter, the love of my life. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, and she's all I could ever want. Aren't you precious? Aren't you my tiny dopamine generator? Oh, yes, who's getting mommy through the pandemic? Yes, you are. Oh, who's my perfect little angel? I'm uh, sorry to hear that. Would you mind putting your mask above your nose? It doesn't work if it doesn't cover your nose. Ugh, fine, Miss Smarty Scientist. As long as I don't have it on that long, I can't breathe with this thing. You know more than I do about this. But actually, can we leave our masks down for this video? Um, we're shooting this collab video on different continents and that's probably more than enough social distance, don't you think? It'll make sound editing so much better. Fine, <laughs> true. But only because we're on separate continents and shooting this inside our bubbles. Anytime you're in public around other people, you really need to wear your mask over your nose. You breathe out of your nose too, you know? Hey, you basically study medicine. Not really. So you know what all the chemical formulas mean, right? So you understand that these COVID-19 vaccines are dangerous and ineffective. Sharon, the vaccines aren't dangerous. They've been fully tested and clinical trials showed all of them to be super effective. Well, I know that a vaccine is usually just a weakened version of the real virus. So Kathy on the Golden Doodle F1B Mommy Facebook group made a really good point about people, well, puppies who have a weaker immune system dying from even a tiny bit of the virus in the vaccine. What if my or little Cece's immune system is weaker than most, but I don't know it? Could a COVID-19 vaccine make me sick with COVID-19? Um, no. An mRNA vaccine doesn't contain the virus, just instructions for making the spike proteins, the red triangles in the picture. Your cells will read the instructions and make the spike proteins, which will trigger your immune system to create the antibodies or remember cells, which will, when your body is being invaded by the real virus in the future, make it possible for your immune system to recognize the virus ASAP and kill it off before it can do harm. So no, you cannot get COVID-19 from the vaccine. The virus isn't in the vaccine. You might have a slight reaction though in the first days after getting vaccinated because your immune system is reacting to the fake COVID-19 that your cells are making and it builds its defense. This is not a side effect though, it is the exact effect you want to have and the differences in the strength of the reaction in each person are due to individual differences. Like, you know, you don't have the exact same symptoms like your housemates when you all have the same flu. Okay, so does that mean the COVID-19 vaccine will alter my DNA? My oldest son, Kevin, loved those superhero movies with the spiders and the X's, so I'm sure he'd love the idea. The mRNA will integrate into my DNA to make me immune. But I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with something changing my DNA. Even if I do get super puppy mom powers. Oh, he's a cutie. Um, no, Sharon, the vaccines cannot alter your DNA and will not give you superpowers. Although I totally agree with Kevin, that would be super cool. But 
mRNA cannot enter the nucleus of the cell, which is the part where the DNA is in. Our own mRNAs have a one-way ticket out of the nucleus once they are created to basically bring the blueprints to the part of the cell, which will then proceed to build the proteins requested by the DNA in the nucleus. mRNA cannot travel into the nucleus and can thus not affect the cell's DNA at all. What it is doing is giving the cell the ability to create the right proteins that will trigger the immune system's response to this very specific virus variant. Okay, so I should definitely get the COVID-19 vaccine? Yes. Okay, but there are a bunch of different vaccines, modern, ah, uh, fiber, that baby lotion company, depending on where you live and what's available. I read a press release saying that some vaccines have higher efficacy rates. That means that those vaccines are better than others, right? So I should wait to get the best vaccine to ensure that I have the most protection? No, no, you don't need to do that. It's, it's true that some vaccines are less efficient than others. But this means that instead of ensuring, for example, a 95% protection from an infection, they ensure only 70%, which means that a person who has been vaccinated with this lesser vaccine is still 70% less likely to get sick from COVID than a non-vaccinated person. And even in these cases, where it did not work as intended, where a vaccinated person still tests positive for the disease, they can expect to have a way milder curse of disease than if they weren't vaccinated at all. My third cousin on my mother's side already had COVID-19 and fully recovered, so they don't need to get vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine. They should be immune already since they had the real thing. Taking the vaccine is suggested for everyone, not just people who haven't had the virus yet. It has been shown that people who have had the virus can even be reinfected after a certain amount of time by the same variant of the virus. I also read that COVID-19 vaccines might cause infertility or miscarriage. I don't plan on having any more children. This precious little angel is more than enough for me. But you're a young woman. Aren't you worried that getting vaccinated might hurt your chances of having children one day? Uh, hold on, that's some dangerous and manipulative misinformation. So I'm going to have to Google where that myth came from. Okay, so in early December, a German doctor and epidemiologist named Wolfgang Wodak, who had been skeptical about the need of vaccines in other pandemics before, teamed up with a former Pfizer employee to ask the European Medicine Agency, which is basically the European Union's counterpart to the FDA, to delay the study and approval of the vaccine. And one of their concerns was a protein called Syncytin-1, which shares similar genetic instructions with part of the spike of this new coronavirus. And that same protein is an important component of the placenta in mammals. And they apparently argued that if the vaccine causes the body to make antibodies against this protein, it might also cause the body to attack and reject the protein in the human placenta, making women infertile. Yeah, that sounds familiar. But the coronavirus's spike protein and syncytin-1 only share small stretches of the same genetic code. That, that's not enough to make them a match. It would be like two people having phone numbers that both contain the number seven. You couldn't dial one number to reach the other person. So the vaccine doesn't affect current or future pregnancies? No, uh, no, it doesn't. And this myth is especially dangerous because pregnant people should protect themselves against the virus itself. In this paper I read a few days ago, it was shown that pregnant women with COVID-19 were found to be more likely to be hospitalized and require ICU admission than non-pregnant cis women. There was a 2% pregnancy loss rate and a small increase in preterm deliveries, although it's not clear whether COVID targets pregnant people specifically. In general, high fevers in pregnancy, especially in the first trimester, can increase the risk of birth defects. Pregnant people should protect themselves from any illness that causes fever, including the regular flu. But the coronavirus is not special enough to actually seek out pregnant women and neither does it affect future pregnancies in any way. Oh good, I'll have to text my friend Carol to tell her the good news. She's been trying since January, but George wanted her to get the vaccine and that's caused a lot of drama, so she'll be relieved. However, 
I have a health condition that will prevent me from getting it. Are you on immunosuppressants or otherwise immunocompromised? Oh, no, but I'm allergic to eggs, which honestly sucks because I have to use chia seeds as a substitute all the time, but I don't think they can use chia seeds as a substitute in a vaccine. So I just shouldn't get the COVID-19 vaccine and rely on other people. Wait, what? Oh, I read that if I have a severe egg allergy, I shouldn't get the vaccine. Where? <laughs> Where did you read something like that? The article was linked on Facebook. Um, I think it was... Never mind. Just, if you have a known allergy, then please inform the people vaccinating you and they will keep you there for observation for about half an hour after the vaccine has been administered. But no, the vaccines are vegan. <laughs> well, they were tested on animals, including humans, but they do not contain any animal products. And they're gluten-free as well. Okay, but even if there are no animal products, I'm worried about potentially harmful chemicals. I heard that the COVID-19 vaccine must be stored at extremely low temperatures because of preservatives in the vaccines. Wait a sec. I think this myth misunderstands the definition of preservatives. Yeah, but we still need to address it because that's a video. Really? Preservatives literally preserve the thing they're in. If there were preservatives, you wouldn't need to store them in such low temperatures. Well, that's not exactly true either, but basically. The reason why they need to be stored at such low temperatures is because mRNA is super fragile and can break down easily. Storing messenger RNA vaccines, like these COVID-19 vaccines, in an ultra-cold environment keeps them stable and safe without preservatives. This, this is what broke you, not the egg thing before? Yeah, I have a thing about people thinking a word means the opposite of what it actually means. Okay, Astra, I think maybe we should take a break for you to collect yourself and finish getting through these on my channel. What do you say? <sighs> yeah, uh, I think I need a break. Let's just do a few more less crazy ones and address the rest of these on your channel. <sighs> okay, I can do this. Okay, I'll definitely get my vaccine when I'm eligible. Oh, I'm so ready for all of this to be over. Getting the COVID-19 vaccine will mean I can finally stop wearing the suffocating masks and finally have Sunday brunch with all the girls and go to football games. Um, um, Sharon, no, no. Getting a vaccine does not stop the virus from entering your body, but rather prevents you personally from getting sick and developing the possibly fatal symptoms, but you might still be able to transmit the virus to other non-vaccinated people, which is not helping in stopping the pandemic. Even though there is no evidence of this indeed being the case yet, it is better to be precautious than to risk spreading the disease further. Oh, like how I have to wear a mask in Trader Joe's now, even though I haven't tested positive for COVID because I don't know if I have COVID or not. Exactly. Anytime you are in public and around other people, you need to wear a mask and practice social distancing. It's all about reducing risk so that fewer people get sick. We all have to work together. But I'm not even at risk for severe complications from COVID-19 because I'm not in any high risk group, so I don't need the vaccine. Like, my egg allergy won't make me need an iron lung if I get COVID. Well, this isn't just about you, though. Getting vaccinated is not only about protecting yourself, but first and foremost, helping to stop the pandemic, protecting the small percentage of people who are unable to be vaccinated due to other health issues or for whom the vaccine isn't effective. Okay, so I'm getting the vaccine to help others? Mainly, yes. Just like wearing a mask. It does protect you personally, but it protects everyone else as well. So I should get the first COVID-19 vaccine that I can, but then I still have to social distance and wear my mask over my nose until everyone else is vaccinated and health officials say that it's okay? Yes. And until that happens, I have to be in a bubble with Cole and trust his lying behind that he's not spending time with literally anyone else? Is it safe for my kids? Is that safe for my precious angel, Cece? That seems like a personal decision. Can't you just tell me what to do with my life? You're smart, you have all the answers. Give them to me. I just need something, anything to make sense. Nothing makes sense anymore. It was just the start of the pandemic last week, but now it's been a year, but everything and nothing has changed. Um, I, I feel you, but 
I'm 26, maybe you should see a professional. There are lots of remote options for finding someone to talk to. You're right. I'll call Astra. She'll tell me what to do. You called? Thank you so much to M Splaining Humans for joining me on this video. Everyone be sure to check out part two of this video on M Splaining Humans channel and check out her other videos as well. She does a great job explaining the quirks of human biology in easy to understand ways. And if you were sent here by the video on her channel, or if you are just happening upon this channel for the first time, please stay a while. Check out our other wacky science videos. Press that subscribe button, leave a comment, come back for a big vaccine video next week, and please wear a mask over your nose. so much for joining us here on Bad Astra. If you enjoyed watching, please like this video, leave a comment telling us what topic you'd like to see next month, and share it with everyone you know. Be sure to also subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. And if you can't get enough of me, Eris, and Science Tommy, join our Patreon, where we post behind the scenes, deep dives, and other fun content. A special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. Astra out.